today's market commentary, please do take a moment to review the disclaimer on screen. Be advised that there is an inherent risk involved in trading the financial markets. You can refer to our website for further details, and if in doubt, please do contact a financial consultant. For Wednesday, the 18th of September 2019, we do have primarily data which refers to the CPI figures across the board for the UK, the Eurozone, um, Canada, and as well as the crude oil inventories and the FOMC statements coming out today. The first bit of data comes out at 10.30 a.m. CET, which refers to this, uh, the UK CPI year on year for the period of August. And then at 11, we do have the Euro CPI year on year for the period of August. And then at 2.30, we have the US building permits for the period of August, followed by the Canadian core CPI month on month for the period of August. And then at 4.30 p.m., we have the crude oil inventories being released. At 8 o'clock, we have the US FOMC economic projections, as well as the FOMC statement, Fed interest rate decision, and the FOMC press conference. Uh, this will primarily be one of the main, um, uh, one of the key drivers uh, for the week, uh, as well as tomorrow's data being released, uh, which looks at the uh, the Bank of Japan's interest rate uh, monetary policy statements as well as GDP figures uh, from um, New Zealand. So Wednesday and Thursday it seems it will be a day with, with uh, quite a bit of, uh, of data which could have significant uh, impact on the market. With the exception of the oil attacks, um, the oil facility attack uh, on Saturday, these two dates would have been the key, the, the key dates to be looking out for uh, with regards to trading uh, opportunities as well as um, market volatility. But look, shifting our attention to today's data, we do have the UK Consumer Price Index uh, year on year for the period of August. And we do know that this figure rose 2.1% year on year uh, from the period of July um, from 2% in the prior month and above the market expectation of a 1.9% uh, rise. Uh, this was primarily due to increases at a, part, uh, at a faster pace for recreation and culture, uh, restaurants and hotels. The previous figure is set at 2.1%, the forecast is at 1.9%. Therefore, if we do get figures that are that is above 1.9 or higher, that should be perceived as being very positive or bullish for the pound, and figures below that will be perceived as being very bearish on the pound. As a result, the markets that I'll be focusing on will be the pound spot currency pairs, such as the pound dollar, as well as looking at the FTSE 100 to get a, a general sense of what the market expectation is with regards to this news release, uh, when one, this uh, news event once it's released. Uh, moving over to the uh, consumer price index year on year for the period of August for the euro area, we do know that this came in at 1% for the prior month and remains unchanged for the forecast as well. Um, the figure of 1% uh, uh, came in in August and it was unchanged from the prior month as well as being in, in, in line with the market consensus, uh, a preliminary estimate um, a preliminary estimate has shown. It remains the lowest inflation rate since November 2016 as the cost of energy is expected to fall while food prices uh, while prices of food, alcohol and tobacco and services are seen are seen uh, to be rising further. Therefore, um, if we do combine the sort of data we've seen as of yesterday with the uh, German ZEW sentiment coming in better than expected at uh, uh, 22 or so versus the minus 38, uh, minus 22 versus the minus 38, um, it does give us some indication that potentially we may be seeing improvements across the, uh, across the euro area. Do bear in mind that Germany is the largest economy in Europe, so therefore what sort of uh, impact or sort of... Uh, performance that takes that happens in that economy tends to have a ripple effect across the euro area and do also bear in mind that last week thursday the ecb did um indicate that they were looking at re re restarting their asset purchase program to the tune of 20 billion euros a month um, for, for an extended period of time starting from the first of november and they were also looking at not just monetary but also fiscal policy measures in, the, in order to shore up uh, the economy uh, in the euro area so if we do get figures that come out today 
better than the previous forecast that definitely would be that would bode well for the eurozone and that will be an indication that potentially in the in the near term these are sort of measures being implemented uh, by the ecb could potentially have some positive impact on the euro euro, uh, the euro area and we could actually see the euro as a result move higher Looking at the next bit of data, which is the U.S. building permits, we do know that this, this figure uh, rose 8.4% from a month earlier to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 1.336 million in July 2019, while the markets were expecting a smaller rise of a 3.1% increase. It is the strongest gain in building permits since June of 2017, as authorization for the, for, for the volatile multifamily housing segment jumped 21.8% to 498,000 and single family permits rose 1.8% to 838,000. Permits for June were revised to 1.232 million from the 1.22 uh, million uh, prior. The uh, forecast that we do have at the moment is set at 1.3 million. So if we do get figures above there or, or thereabouts, that would be perceived as being very positive for the, for the dollar. Looking at the next big bit of data, which is the Canadian uh, core CPI, uh, the figure came in at uh, 0.5%. So therefore, if we do get figures uh, above that in today's uh, announcement, that will be perceived as being very strong for the Canadian uh, dollar. Obviously, obviously uh, with the news of the oil facility attacks, um, that has obviously had a, an impact on the uh, dollar CAD. Uh, currency pair. So any sort of news that we do get out with regards to uh, the tensions between Iran, Saudi Arabia and the US could potentially even feed into, into today's data as well. So do bear that in mind when this data does come, in, in, come, come out because any sort of news announcement with regards to oil will impact the Canadian economy uh, as well, being that it does obviously uh, export crude as well. The next bit of data is the crude oil inventories, and we do know that the uh, and we do know that the uh, stockpiles fell by 6.912 million barrels in the week ended the 6th of September 2019, following a 4.771 million drop in the prior period, and against the market expectation of a 2.686 million decrease. Um, the as a result, if we do get figures that are better than the forecast of minus 2.889 million, uh, we, could, we could potentially see uh, a move higher. Although it, they, we have seen trends whereby we do get to see uh, the price of crude actually move before the announcements, normally a, a day or so before, we tend to see some sort of reaction. And over the last, since Saturday, we have seen, uh, first of all, a crude oil rise, a WTI rise by 12.72%, and Brent crude rise by 13.72%. And then as of yesterday, we did see uh, crude oil pull back um, um, by 4.9%, uh, and then Brent crude by over 5%. So we are seeing these movements ahead of announcements, and therefore, if we do get any sort of um, better than expected figures today, we could potentially see a reversal and it, uh, a reversal in price and see it move higher. However, uh, do bear in mind that any sort of news that comes out that doesn't perhaps shed better, uh, shed light on uh, uh, on um, who's to, who's responsible for the attacks and any further aggravation could obviously see uh, crude oil prices move lower, particularly if we do not get any sort of assurance that uh, oil output is being restored to prior levels. We did get announcements on Tuesday by the Energy Prime Minister of, of Saudi Arabia stating that crude oil uh, output would be restored by the end of the month, which would obviously then see the price, the price of crude oil pull lower. And uh, could pull lower as a result. So, all this sort of data needs to be factored in when we look at the crude oil inventories uh, data coming out today. And then, lastly, uh, we do have the FOMC uh, economic projections. We do know that the uh, Federal Reserve lowered the target range for the federal funds rate to two point. Uh, between 2 and 2.25 percent during its July meeting, uh, which was the first uh, cut since the financial crisis as inflation remains subdued amid heightened concerns about the economic outlook and the ongoing trade tensions with China. So that projection itself 
will be something that they would look to maintain. There is that expectation of seeing a 25 basis point cut um, in today's announcement. So that is almost factored in. And there is also that expectation of seeing another one before the end of the year and potentially a further two in 2020. So we are seeing a lot of changes, uh, a lot of an expectation with regards to the um, <clears throat> US Fed making revisions on its, uh, on its uh, interest rates. And that in, in itself will uh, uh, give us an indication as to what the uh, uh, what is their future monetary policy and what their outlook is for the economic uh, situation in the uh, in the US if we now look at the uh, next bit of data which is the headlines for today uh, this particular data and the ones that we will see in just a minute <clears throat> will definitely give us a, a, a good sense of what we can of what could potentially be a catalyst in today's market as stated previously um, the <clears throat> excuse me the Saudi uh, energy prime minister Abdulaziz bin Salman did state on Saturday uh, on Tuesday excuse me um, and so uh, on Tuesday that they were going to assure the markets of uh, restoring its lost oil production by month end having recovered supplies to customers to the levels they were prior to the weekend attacks as a result we saw uh, prices retreat and close uh, and at the close we did see WTI crude uh, close down minus uh, 4.93% at 5880 per barrel whilst Brent crude closed 5.9% 5.95% lower at 6399 uh, per barrel um, the allegations obviously still continue to spread with regards to the origins of the attack and thereby adding further tensions <clears throat> between Iran, Saudi Arabia and the US. Uh, we also did get uh, further news that the market uncertainties uh, still remain, uh, still makes safe haven assets a preferred play and as a result we saw gold close 0.2% higher at 1501.04 above the key level of the $1500 per ounce uh, price. While the 10-year US Treasury yield fell to 1.799% compared with, the, with Friday's one and a half month high of 1.908% ahead of the Fed policy's announcement today. While a 25, uh, a 25 uh, basis point rate cut is seen as a near certainty, investors are still looking at the statement and economic projections from the Fed policymakers, especially given the differences in, in opinion uh, amongst them. According to um, Masahiko Lowe, Lowe, who is the portfolio ma manager at Alliance Burst Bernstein, he has stated that markets are currently almost pricing in three more rate cuts by the end of next year, including one uh, for, uh, for this year. But there's also the possibility that the Fed's stance could be more hawkish uh, than the markets anticipate. And as a result, we could see a rise in bond yields in the near term. We well, you know that uh, short term US interest rates shot up this week with overnight repo rates rising to 7% largely due to seasonal factors such as huge payments for taxes and bond supplies, bond supply, which prompted the uh, New York Fed to conduct its first repo operation in more than a decade to, inject, and to inject funds to, to stressed money markets. The New York Federal Reserve also did state on Tuesday that it would conduct reach, uh, repurchase agreement operations early on Wednesday in order to help maintain the federal funds rate, uh, rate within the target range of 2 to 2.25%. The latest uh, Reuters poll also suggests that the Bank of Japan will keep its policy on hold, uh, with 28 out of the 41 uh, economists expecting uh, that they will ease its policy, uh, their policy this year, and 13 believing that it, they may a surprise uh, the market by taking action at the Thursday meeting. Um, lastly, in the currency markets, we did see the euro uh, stay flat, relatively flat, at uh, 1.1064 after a 0.66% gain in the prior trading on better than expected readings from the ZEW economic data from Germany, uh, which obviously boosted cons uh, conf uh, investor confidence. 
The sterling traded at uh, 124.83, uh, down 0.1% so far uh, today, having hit a two-month high of 125.28 as investors reverse their bets against the uh, currency on fears of a no-Brexit uh, deal at the end of October. When we also contrast that with the sort of news announcements that you do see on screen from the uh, uh, economic uh, slowdown in, Ger uh, in China, as well as seeing the exports of Japan fall for nine consecutive months, uh, as well as seeing prices of gold pull back, and, uh, the, uh, and Britain's hope of, a, of, a, of igniting a, a, a negotiation with Australia, Plus the crude oil prices, we have a lot of potentially volatile news which could move the markets either way. So the headlines are being put up today to give us a very clear indication that any of these sort of announcements could significantly move the markets either up or down and therefore caution is being uh, advised and the prudent risk management is definitely uh, something to, do, to take into consideration. At this juncture, let's have a quick look at the uh, state of play of the market. We do have on screen is the S&P 500 daily time frame. Uh, yesterday, we did see it close 0.2%, 0.12% higher at just over the at 3,004.1 above the key level of 3,000. Uh, we have we have taken out initially what was my right shoulder, but still unable to take out the highs at 3,026. Therefore, until we take out that high, we could potentially be forming maybe a new sort of uh, head, uh, right shoulder, sorry, and in, in that sense, potentially see um, uh, at the S&P move lower. But if we take out the, the, the figure, uh, if we take out the highs at 3,026, then this uh, head and shoulder pattern becomes invalidated, and then the uh, expectation will be to buy the pullbacks as we have now resumed, uh, uh, the, um, uh, resumed the uptrend as a result. Looking at uh, WTI crude, we've seen that move down from yesterday's uh, sell-off by the minus 4.93%. We're now almost testing the previous highs, uh, swing highs at 58.79. In actuality, we did test it from yesterday when they closed at 58.52. Uh, and so we are slightly above that level. If we're able to maintain that level, I'm just going to annotate that on my chart. And move over to the to the lower time frame to get us to give us a better perspective. If we're able to hold that level uh, and bounce up, then there is that expectation to see it retest the highs at 63.33. Uh, if I do highlight that region where we're seeing where we're currently seeing that consolidation, it, it does give me some sort of uh, uh, indication that what could potentially be could be a broadening formation um, as well as a consolidation in the process. So there is that likelihood that we could see price um, do, do this sort of thing um, in today's trading. It could potentially move up, move high, um, uh, move retest, and then potentially break up to the upside, and then maybe potentially move to the downside. Um, so with the sort of price action we have, we, we have seen price uh, make a significant advance, um, and as a result, what we could do is uh, look to find a way to actually trade this by perhaps using the Fibonacci uh, retracement. So if we go from the high, from the low to the high, we do see that the uh, 61.8 comes in about 57.55, and the 50% retracement level, which technically is not a Fibonacci uh, re number, comes in at 58.65. So if we break below that 58.65 today, then potentially we could see it move lower to 57.55 and then to the 78.2 level at around 55.96. So there is a significant opportunity on, the, uh, on, on, on crude today, but there is also a great deal of, of risk as well. So do factor that in in, in your trading. Looking lastly at gold, we have seen gold. I'm just going to move over to the daily time frame. 
we have seen gold remain in that consolidation which we have uh, mentioned over the last few videos uh, it still remains above the key level of 1500 yesterday it closed at 1501.04 up by 0.2 percent as of today uh, it's still up by just 0.03 percent so nothing significant as a result however if we do get any sort of uh, unexpected news if we get any so any any sort of headlines um, that could potentially move cause the price of gold to actually move up or down if we do get positive numbers um, coming out of CPI figures we could see strength in the indices um, in the dollar which could potentially cause gold, gold to sell off um, in any event my expectation in the, for the long term particularly as we remain in this uh, period of uncertainty is to trade gold to the long side therefore any sort of pullbacks particularly if we pulled uh, down towards the 1470 even down to 1452 or even 1438 I'd still be, be looking for longs on gold the only time that my bias will really shift to the downside is if we penetrate we go back into this range which we had from the 1st of July 2016 whereby we now start to trade in uh, below 1375 but until then uh, my bias will remain uh, to the long side even if we do see prices come and retest this area around 30 uh, retest this trend line if we get a, a, a retest there and a move um, then my bias still remains, remains strong but a close inside this trend line uh, inside this wedge will def definitely change my bias on gold but for the time being I remain very positive uh, on gold particularly due to the sort of uh, news announcements that we have seen and the sort of volatility uh, that we are seeing in the markets as a result that will bring us to the end of today's market commentary if you'd like to discuss any of the matters raised, uh, you can do so by referring to our website at alb.com and you can contact us via the medium shown, um, shown uh, available on there and my colleagues and I will, more, will be more than delighted to assist with any queries that you may have. We'd like to wish you the very best in your trading and we wish you the very best uh, uh, for the full day. All the very best. Take care. Thank you.